Morning, everybody. Glad to be here. Was wanting to do this probably like a month ago, and uh, we first decided. So I've been very uh, a little amped up today. So um, those of you that are in the front row, this might be like a Gallagher concert. So uh, uh, might get a little get a little spit on you today. Um, how many of you came in here with a story? Right? We all have a story. Um, and uh, so I want to talk to you for the next few minutes about that. Um, each one of us has stories, and sometimes because of circumstances and things that happen in our lives, we are afraid of them. We're afraid of our stories. We're afraid of the, the back pages. We're af- afraid of... Uh, the bibliography in the back of our book, and we don't want to share the pages, and some of it's uh, fear, some of it's uh, guilt, some of it's regret, some of it's whatever, Uh, but I want to make it perfectly clear that God wants you to share your story. God is calling us to share the story of redemption that Christ has given each and every one of us. All of us have made to this place from different ways. All of us have made it to this room today, not by accident, not by chance, not by luck, but by divine providence. You're here today. And God is asking you and wants to share with you today to tell your story. And it's it's so very important. For some of us and for sometimes in the world, we, we think that there's not a, a lot of urgency about our story and about what we're supposed to share, that we have a lot of time to get all this stuff out. And listen, if you have been under a rock or your head's been buried in the sand and you haven't been around for a long time, you know that by what's going on in our country and in our world that we cannot wait to share the story of redemption that God has brought to our lives. There are so many people in need of it. There are so many people in search of it. There are so many people that are in desperate need to hear your story, your particular story, your story that would only resonate with someone else, and if you silence it, if you won't share it, if you won't talk about it, somebody's missing out on an opportunity to actually get redemption just like you. And so I want us to to realize and know that God wants us to share what's coming in our lives and what's happened in our lives and what's going on in our lives. And sometimes we don't do it because of scars, because of the scars in our lives. Let's, let's look real quick at a verse, Psalm 107.2. Psalm 107.2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north, and the south. I just added a couple verses. But let the redeemed tell their story. And sometimes we won't tell it because of the scars that are kind of on our bodies, in our souls. I have some scars. I got a, I got a scar that's kind of, uh, I got one that's on my leg from softball, from catching in softball. We used to be able to wear metal cleats. And uh, matter of fact, I think it's this leg, dummy me. I, I didn't move my leg out of the way when I was trying to tag somebody so the guy clipped me. I've got a scar right here on the bridge of my nose. I was working in air conditioning and I was in this little uh, daycare, and all the little kitties were laying on their, their towels. And we had this suspended heater that was actually suspended with, with a three-quarter inch uh, um, gas pipe or just, just metal pipe. And so there was two guys up on top taking the pipes down. I was underneath, kind of with my head about this far from underneath this suspended heater in this room. And no, hey, this is the last turn. No, hey, uh, we just finished. No, hey, this thing's about ready to crash into your skull and smash your face into a ladder and scare all the kids. And you lay on the side of the building with a big old gash, and the lady thinks you're dead. Nothing. No, nothing. (laughs) Nothing. And that's exactly what happened. That heater hit my head, 
smashed my face in the ladder. The ladder went over there. I was up against this wall over here, like just laying like this. Blood was running down my face, and the lady's looking at me like, he's dead. <laughs> and all the kids, they're dripping their towels. Like, what in the world? This is not supposed to happen, right? And then so later on, I was, I was doing something, working, and, and I threw this metal piece up here, and the thing came down and hit me right in the nose again. Gashed my nose. And, and so I had like three stitches. I went into the office, told the lady, it's my, my face bleeding. Oh, my. She's like, you're bloody. <laughs> we have scars. We have scars in our lives, and, and some of you can talk about, we could talk about scars for days. We could talk about all these incidences that happened in our lives, and some of them are funny, and some of them are not so funny. Some of them are because of childbirth. Kathy's got a, like a scar on her back from where she had a spinal from having Carrie. And every once in a while she tells me, this thing itches, this thing bugs me. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm glad I'm not a woman. That's, that's the only thing that goes into my mind. I'm glad I didn't have to give childbirth. I've been such a wuss about the whole thing. Right? 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 5 says this. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of compassion. The God of comfort who comforts us in all our troubles. So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over our lives, so we also can do that in other people's lives. The God of comfort comes and shares his comfort with us so that we can turn around and share that comfort with others. How do we do it? By telling our story. By letting people see that scars aren't scary. By letting people see that these scars tell a story and that from what they are, even if they're on the outside, but many of us are carrying scars on the inside. And scars run really, really deep. Very deep. So deep, many of us can't talk about it. So deep that many of us can't share what's really going on in our lives. Scars run deep, and they run deep with the fact that not only do we have these physical scars that are going on, but this emotion that, that's, that's, that's changing the, the, the very momentum that's taking place in our lives. These emotional scars that won't let us go. These emotional things that won't allow us to actually live normal. These, 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 and, and hey, what's normal anyway? Right? It's relative. Your normal is my crazy. I mean, that's gravity, Right? That's gravity. Gravity's normal to everybody else. It's just that you, you're just a nutcase. Right? But that's normal. The, the whole idea, it's relative to who you are and what you are. So you can't say, well, my scars are not normal, so I can't share them. Listen, you don't know that there's someone else who has the very same scar that you do that's just waiting to be able to touch your scars. To hear your story. To hear you tell them how God has changed your life. And what he's done and how he's done it. They need it. It is actually kind of a, it's kind of that thing that, that clicks the light on. Giving people hope and letting them realize that there's something greater. There's something greater than what I really have right now. We conceal our scars we pretend they don't exist. You know, I had an old saying, you got problems, I got problems, we all got problems. Right? It's true. Everybody has issues. Just some people won't admit it. Some people don't want to recognize it. Some people want to take these things and push them so far to the side and act like that they've, they've never been there. But the fact of the matter is that these emotional scars are doing something in your life that's causing you not to get all the blessings and all the things that God wants because you're holding it in. 
and you need to tell your story. Listen, let me just say this. You and I, as people of God, and you and I need to have enough grace and enough love in our heart that we'll allow people to tell their story without judgment. This isn't about you and I telling people that they are bad or good. Jesus said, listen, this is the words of Christ. I didn't come to condemn the world. Why? Because the world's already condemned. The fact of the matter is, is if you and I went around condemning everybody who had a story, we'd have to turn around and as five fingers are going out, there's 15 fingers coming back. Because we're under the same condemnation. This isn't about telling people who's right and who's wrong. This is allow, about allowing our story to resonate with somebody, not because it's about us, but it's about the redemptive power of Christ that changes our lives and sets us free and allows us to do things that we never thought we'd be able to do and go places we never thought we'd be able to go. This is about you and I not taking these scars and pushing them to the side. No matter how painful, no matter how ugly, no matter how uh, uh, troubling that it might be, he doesn't want you and I to ignore the scorched places of our past. That we're not supposed to wallow in it, but these things serve a purpose. They serve a purpose to allow the story of God's redemptive power in your life to actually come alive in the life of somebody else. Jesus constantly used stories. Hello? It's what he did. Why? So it would actually make sense to people who, are, who, who couldn't make sense of any of it. God wants you and I, he wants you and I to realize that what we're doing it's meaningful, it's purposeful, that, it, that, it, that, that lives are changed because you and I allow the God of the universe to take this old wretched person that we are, to make it new, and to actually share that experience with someone else, who then in turn can take that wretchedness and that sin that has been changed and transformed and that brokenness that's been made new by the power of God and through the presence of the Holy Spirit in somebody's life and they can actually guess what share it with somebody else man it's like a domino effect you know what the one thing about God that's great God doesn't work in the in the area of addition God works in the area of multiplication God multiplies people. He multiplies things. He multiplies all these things. And your hurt, your scar, your story, the issue of your life can make just wonderfully uh, a difference in somebody else's life and, and heart if you'll bring it and allow God to use it and allow God to share your story and your life with others. Isn't it great to see that God actually knows what he's doing? That he knows that the enemy tries to use these things. He tries to use these things to keep us down. That the enemy tries to use these things to, to get us to not have a voice. That, God, that, that, that the enemy tries to get us to be silent about what's going on. And God says, hey, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these things, all things, good and bad, and I'm going to use them for good. I'm going to take the situations of your life. I'm going to take the hurts of your life. I'm going to take the pains of your life. And I'm going to allow these things to actually make a difference in the life of somebody else. The enemy basically gets fooled and he gets outsmarted by God. He wants to trip us and destroy us and make us do so many other things and make us fall. But God wants us to walk upright. He doesn't want us to allow the wrong choices and the pains of our past to continue to haunt us and to hold us down. So, tell your story. No matter how ugly it might be, no matter how difficult that it might be, tell your story. What about the scars of God's people? There's a lot of, think about it. Think, think about it for a second. There's a guy, he's running around in the graveyard. He's cutting himself. They've got chains on him, but they can't hold him down. He's just breaking these chains like crazy. He's naked. He's crazy out of his mind. 
You look at him, his eyes are just bugged out. People can't go visit their loved ones because this nut job is just running through, scaring everybody. Okay? He's going nuts. And then he meets Jesus. And the Bible says, and he was then clothed and in his right mind. What about his scars? He said, can I follow you? And Jesus said, no, I think it's better if you stay here in town and go tell everybody else what happened to me. Right? Jesus wasn't trying to portray himself to be great. He was trying to portray the Father to be great. Right? And so what he's trying to have this man do, so can you imagine... As people were coming along, and here they are, people are just, they're, they're just there, and they, and they finally, they, they said, man, I don't hear the screaming anymore. I don't hear all the craziness going on. I don't see that nutcase running through the, by where my grandfather's buried. I think I'll go over there and look around, and they go over there, and there he is, sitting, not screaming, not cutting, clothed. Can you imagine the story he could have told? Imagine when people were able to sit down with him, what he's telling them. You know, I was just crazy as a loon. I was a nutcase. I was crazy. You saw me. I was running all over the place, saying all kinds of things, scaring everybody. I scared babies for crying out loud. But Jesus changed my life. Look at me. I'm actually clothed. I don't know when the last time was. I wore clothes. Look, my scars are starting to heal because Jesus changed my life, changed my heart. I was full of demons. Jesus sent those demons and he cast them into some pigs, right? This is the story. What about him? What, what, what about the story of the centurion who got to go tell people, guess what? My daughter was really sick. And I wanted to go, and I wanted to make sure she got well, and I actually sent word, and I, I, I told this, this man that if he could heal her, he didn't even have to go. If he would just speak it, it would happen. And guess what? He spoke. She was well. What about Jarius? What about the stories Jarius could tell? Because his daughter was dead, and Jesus came and raised her to life. What about Jairus' daughter? What story could she tell? What about Lazarus? Man, I was in the grave for three days. I could smell my own stink. And guess what? I'm alive. I might be dressed like a mummy, man, but I'm alive. Wow, what stories could you tell? Hey, weren't you dead? I was, but I'm alive now. Man, the stories you and I, hey, of course, you know, you, you, can't, you can't take that one. That one's just for Lazarus, okay? Because I know some people, they like to take other people's stories and kind of make them their own, you know? <laughs> this isn't about fish tales. This isn't about taking somebody else's story. This is about allowing God to share your story, Right? Man, uh, Psalm 55, verses 12 through 14. It says, if an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, a companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God, as we walked about among the worshipers. David had a scar to bear. David had his own issues. I heard somebody say last weekend, and I thought it was really good, when David should have been out on the battlefield, he was actually up on the rooftop. Hello, men? There are times when you, all of us, are actually rooftop and we should be out on the battlefield we're actually doing things that we shouldn't be doing which we should be out there in the battlefield serving the lord 
David had something that he had to deal with. And, and, it's, and it's kind of interesting. You and I can deal with a lot of things, but somebody that's close to us, that, 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 that goes against us or says something bad about us, it's kind of hard. He had a scar. What about Hebrews 11, 35 through uh, 38? And I'm just going to start at this part. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some uh, 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 faced uh, jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. And they were put to death by stoning and they were saved. In, in, or excuse me, sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They, were, they went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. And the world was not worthy of them. And they wandered in deserts and in mountains, living in caves and in holes and in the ground. These followers of God carried scars. Listen, you and I have an opportunity to be among the faithful. We have an opportunity to be among those who actually could make a difference in the lives of other people. We have an opportunity to be part of a, a generation of people that actually do something about what's happening in their life and don't allow this world and the things of this world and the pundits of this world and the naysayers of this world and the books and, and, and the agendas of this world cause us to take this beautiful picture of love that God has given to each and every one of us and squander it and squash it and silence it and put it away. It's time for the people of God. It's time for the redeemed to tell their story. It's time for you and I to get up on our feet and to move out and to share with people that even though we failed, that God saw us worthy to be saved, that even though we didn't make it, God saw us worthy to be healed, that even though we're not the prettiest or the greatest or the most wonderful, that God loves us just the same. love of God is rich and full and wonderful and strong. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. This love of God is there and you and I don't want to be the ones to squash it. We don't want to be the ones to, to put it aside. It's time to tell our story. It's time to allow people to know that this God of the universe is real, that this isn't fake, that this isn't something, that we're not crazy, that we're not nuts, that God actually took us from the miry clay and set us on a rock to stay, that God actually took and put us who were acting like Eeyores all the time and actually gave us a skip in our step, a smile on our face, and actually gave us something to say that was worthwhile for once. God wants you and I to know that also one day, all of these scars are going to be gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God that one of these days, you and I are going to stand in a place together with no pain, no sorrow, no sickness, no suffering, no scars. There's not going to be any of these things. You're not going to worry about all the things that we've worried about. Those that have blindness can see. Those that have cancer will be healed. Those are perfect. There's no cancer cells. There's no diabetes. There's no problems. There's no mental illness. There's none of these things because one day God is going to make everything new. One of these days, it's all going to happen he, wants to, he said in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 53, listen, I tell you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. Not the blink of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye. We're all going to be changed. When that last trumpet sounds, the dead are going to be raised imperishable. Imperishable. 
and we will be changed. For the perishable must be clothed itself with imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And then Revelations 21, 3 and 4 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them and be their God. And he will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death, no more mourning, crying, pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The old order is going out, folks. One of these days, all these things are going to be gone and our scars will be healed. Completely gone. But how about this? Until then, tell your story. Until then, share the message. Until that day, make sure you let people in on this big mystery that God, this great God that we serve, is no respecter of persons. Doesn't matter what side of the track you live on. Doesn't matter what kind of money you put in the black box. It doesn't matter what kind of, uh, of, of songs you sing, what kind of voice you have. It doesn't matter what color of your skin. It doesn't matter what denomination you thought you were. It doesn't matter any of these things because the God of the universe is above all, through all, and in all, and will change everyone in a moment. And he wants to change our lives, but he wants us to tell the story until he comes. And then my final thought today is this. And I, I, really, I really thought about this as, as I was going to finish. The, the, the idea that, that um, put, put the last point up, Brenda. Scars bring hope. I thought about this, and the um, only person I could think of was Thomas. He's the only person that comes to my mind right up front. And I really think Thomas gets a bad rap. I think we call him Doubting Thomas, and really we should call him just like us, Thomas. That's a lot to say, but, you know, doubting Thomas is so much easier. But just like us, Thomas is a, is a mouthful. But I really think it's true because Thomas is every one of us. Come on now. Come on now. Somebody you know has died, and one of your friends comes and tells you, hey, I saw your buddy. He's alive. You're going to say, hey, until he comes up and fist bumps me, I ain't going to believe it. Right? Until he sends me a text message. I'm not going to believe it. So he messages me, he calls me, does something, I'm not going to believe it. Thomas is just like all of us. And to me, one of the greatest verses of the Bible is in John 20. When Thomas finally sees Jesus. Finally sees Jesus. 28. After he, he says, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and Put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Man, I am so much like Thomas. My doubt and my scars and my hurt run so deep. Jesus said, just look, here they are. Here's all the hope you need. It's all the hope you need. And we can say with a loud voice and together we can say, my Lord and my God, tell your story. Tell the story of redemption. Tell the story that the day that God saved you. Tell the story of how God loves you and you know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Talk to people about the miracles in your life. Tell people about the God who loves them so much that he sent his son to die for them. Tell them so the world will know. Tell your story.
and I'd carry and then come back up. Tell your story, the story of redemption. Tell the story about how God is every day changing your heart and changing your life. Tell the story about what it means in your life to look back and see that you're not who you used to be. How you can turn around and see the things, how they've actually changed in your life. Tell the story of our great God and how much he loves you and how much he loves them. Folks, this is really a simple story. It's, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be intellectually driven. This isn't a lot about a lot of fancy words. This isn't a lot about some kind of crazy program. Folks, this is grassroots stuff. This is on the ground stuff. This is actual life-changing stuff. This is those of us who've been in addictions who are no longer following that path. This is those of us who have been, who've been cratered by sin who are now out of the crater and actually walking on flat ground. This is about people who actually are seeing a light when they were been covered in darkness for year after year after year. This is actually about a change that's taking place in a life when no change even was even thinking about coming their way. This is a hope for people who are hopeless. This is about change for people who hate change so much that they would run from it in a heartbeat. This is about God taking people, God taking people and making them great. This is about God taking the people that are hopeless, broken, addicted, uh, sinful, degraded, no good, back of the line, never picked for a team. This is about God making them writers of Bibles, writers of books in the Bible. This is about God taking people who nobody else wanted to take and God making them great. Why? Because Jesus is in their life. This isn't about us. This isn't about a church building. This isn't about preachers. This is about Christ changing lives. Folks, we don't have much time. Tell your story. Tell it. And don't hold back. If tears come, let them come. Tell it with conviction. Tell it with power. Tell it with purpose. And tell it with promise. The promise is this, that one day Jesus is coming back. And he's going to take us all home. Hallelujah. Yeah.